My name is Maria M. Williams, and I am the owner of In the Eye of the Beholder Art Gallery and Studio, as well as the founder of uh, the Art of Four Art Initiative here in San Antonio. Uh, simple as uh, seeing um, the lack of opportunity for black artists um, and contacting an artist that I knew and asking, hey, I'm seeing artists getting a recognition and grants and um, I don't see any artists that look like me. So what do we do? I don't want to whine about it. How do we fix it? How do we take action and change that? And the Art of Four was born and that was uh, October of 2019. Um, had no intentions of opening a, an art gallery. Um, I was just hoping to show black artists their strength and what can be done when they work together and unite. Um, but here we are in, in the eye of the beholder art gallery. <laughs> so um, I am everything I did not intend to be, which is a gallerist, a curator. Um, my intention was truly and is still uh, to be an art activist. So I like to call myself an activist. I got that term from a gentleman, an artist by the name of Daryl Radcliffe in Dallas and when I was working with him. So I'm a proud activist. Oh, okay, that's gonna be fun. So um, I am a military brat. Um, my, my mother is Cuban, my father is Panamanian. He joined the United States military. Um, and here we are, my, I was born in Germany. Um, we were stationed here at Fort Sam where my father chose to retire. I had no clue that I would end up in San Antonio, Texas after I graduated out of high school. Um, but I am here, I have one son, uh, Nathaniel Williams, Nathaniel Christian, and uh, I have three granddaughters. Um, and I say that knowing that Two are my blood. One may not be my blood, but she's definitely, definitely my granddaughter. So I have Hazel Ray, who's 13. I have Yasmin, who is eight. And I also have Havani Rain, who is four. So, you know, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't believe I was, because that was never my dream. My dream was actually to sing. I was going to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> and be in the music industry. Um, my sister at, at the anniversary of the gallery told the story of uh, when I was a little girl, I would throw, like, just pour the flower out. And then she said she would be there moving it around. So I think she was always an artist, but I'm not an artist. Uh, I'm an art lover. I'm an art enthusiast. And again, I'm an art activist. Um, this is a surprise to me as, as well as those who know me. Um, I love art, uh, and I guess I just felt that I needed to fight for the black artist, uh, because in my mind, and to me, I truly believe they are our historians. Uh, what you see, and, and, and all artists are, but what you see an artist paint is what they're seeing in their time, and so, hence, that's why I believe that they are historians throughout time. In the next five years, um, my goal is, though I own a, a black art gallery, I hope that black artists will be able to be just artists. I hope they will gain the respect and the value in the art industry to where their work is what speaks for them. Um, it speaks for them now, but I just mean in a different light. So I'm hoping in the next five years to not have to work as hard uh, for equity and equality, um, but that's what our goal is. One of the other things that I learned from the artists that I've worked with is a lot of them are self-taught, um, and they didn't even know they could paint, or they knew they could paint, they knew they could draw, but they didn't know they could be artists. And my goal is to get it into our youth, um, to give that encouragement. I love that uh, when I have people bring their children in, they'll return a few days later and they'll have something that their, their child was inspired to do because they came to the gallery. Um, I'm hoping to have more space for, for our artists uh, to show. Um, 
And I, I think that's I think that's the ultimate goal. It's just for black artists to have the respect and value and the reverence that all other artists have. Yes, we were awarded uh, two murals to um, at the San Pedro Creek, and they were awarded to us by the San Antonio River Authority. Um, one will be called St. James Joy. When they were doing the excavation for the San Pedro Creek uh, Cultural Park, they actually uh, found a foundation, a cornerstone to what is now known to be uh, the oldest AME church here in San Antonio. And please, I'm hoping the date is correct, but I, it's 1863. So one of our murals will be um, honoring that find. And then we have, and that, that will be done by Jocelyn Van Taylor. And then we have another um, mural that's a little farther down on San Pedro Creek, and that will be Tyson uh, Davis. That mural is phenomenal as well. Um, he has black bodies coming up out of the water. Um, and that one is called Rise. So we're excited about that. Now we will have, um, on March 18th, um, public engagement. So we're gonna have a paint day, and that is going to allow the public to come out, pick up a paintbrush, do a few strokes on the murals, and uh, when they are walking with their friends, family, and folks from out of town, they can say, yes, I had a hand in this mural. So that's what's coming up. Uh, right now, we did just sign uh, an MOU with the San Antonio Public Theater where we will be able to also show the work of these artists. Now, the difference in the gallery and the showing at the Public Theater, I've had several artists, Caucasian artists, Hispanic artists, who understand my mission but love what I'm doing and they just come in and say, you know, we love how we feel when we come into the gallery. We love what you're doing, and we'd love to be, you know, a part of uh, the Art of Four Art Initiative and in the Eye of the Beholder Art Gallery. Uh, but we don't want folks to be able to say, she gave up, <laughs> she gave in, and uh, take away from the focus of my advocacy for black artists. So the public theater will be housing all artists, including black artists. And that will give me the opportunity to, um, I never want to practice exclusion, but preach inclusion. So it makes me very happy that I now have another space, which will be our satellite gallery, where I can show all art and have that inclusion that I'm trying to get for black artists um, without any question. You know, every time I talk about an artist and I buy a piece that they've done, I was like, this is one of my favorites. And then, so every, <laughs> every piece, every style um, is my favorite. Um, you have to remember that I didn't get into the industry via by just liking art. It was the advocacy for the artist. So I'm learning to like all types of art, um, art that I hadn't even thought would be something I'd like. We have an artist here by the name of Clyde Lewis, and Clyde strictly does Western art. Um, some of the most beautiful art that I've ever seen and some pieces that I would love to have in my home. Go figure. <laughs> you know, so um, I don't have a favorite medium. I just love beautiful art. I love art that provokes thought and conversation. Um, I love art that um, allows the artist to have cultural expression, if you will, um, and cultural expression with, without the need for um, explanation. You know, so having cultural expression is important without having to explain the why. This is my legacy. Those same young ladies, uh, the two oldest ones, I took them in the office and I shared with them this is their legacy. They don't have to be artists, although Hazel Ray is a pretty good artist. <laughs> um, but they need to champion the, the arts. Um, and they need to always fight for equity and equality, in, no matter what, whether it's art, um, whether your social work, whatever it is. My legacy is to always be culturally strong, be proud of who you are, be proud of the community you're from. Um, and show that and fight for that. And when you see the inequity and 
the inequality, you stand firm and you fight against it and you fight for your community. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.